Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day doing whatever you're doing out there. Uh, it feels like it's been quite a while since I last uploaded a video onto the channel here, uh, but it feels good to be back and it feels good to see everyone out there yet again. Now, what exactly am I going to cover in today's video here? Well, I have a couple of different advanced Swift tricks that I would like to expose to everyone out there watching my videos. And uh, more specifically, I would like to cover how we can create our own custom array extensions that will be super helpful if we are writing out a lot of iOS applications. So the way I'm going to start off today's video is to swipe out the breakdown or the rundown for today's video. Uh, the first thing we are going to start off with is a softball interview style question. Uh, this is going to help us lay the foundation for the rest of today's video and the discussion we're going to have. Uh, the second topic is to create our own custom extensions. And then finally, if we have enough time for the rest of today's video, we're going to cover how we can use extensions with matching types. And then that might sound a little confusing. We'll go over exactly what that means uh, later down the road. All right. So having said all of that, I would like to start off with a softball interview question that is really easy to kind of implement here. And here is the softball question. So softball interview question. Uh, the reason why we call it a softball is uh, typically this question is really easy to answer. And the question here is, I want you to provide a function that can sum up a list of numbers like so. And so here is the very first task that we need to complete. And let me show you exactly how to write out this function right below. I'm going to declare a function with func like so. And let me just write out my function name like that. I'm going to take in a parameter called numbers and let it be of integer for now. And this function here should return some kind of integer as well. Now, the way we are going to actually invoke this function called sum is to call sum right below. And we're going to pass in a numbers array, let's say one, two, and three. Now the sum of one, two, and three should be six, uh, but we obviously cannot run this function right now because it's missing a return value for this function. And so why don't we go ahead and implement the logic inside of here? This should be relatively easy for most of you guys out there. So I'll do this rather quickly. Uh, one way to actually implement this function is to use a for each loop. So let's use var res equals zero. That's my starting value. And then I'll say numbers, which is our numbers parameter right there. We are going to execute a for each loop on it. Uh, use the autocomplete for this function right here. And then hit enter, you'll get this guy. And for each one of your numbers inside of your array, you're just going to call it num like that. And then finally on line 13, we'll say res plus equals num like so. And then at the very end of this function, we are going to just return this res like that. All right, so let's get rid of some of these spaces here. And now we can try to run this function. Let me minimize myself down to the corner here. And as you can see, the sum of one, two, three is obviously six on the right side. Uh, you can pump in a four and run it again, and you'll get the value of 10. Now I'm using Xcode 10.0. Let me show you exactly what this is, 10.0. This allows us to have this blue left bar on the left side and you can hit the play button to execute the code changes that you introduce. All right, so this is the softball question that we would like to answer. And uh, there's actually another very easy way of implementing this logic here. And uh, if you don't want to use a for each loop, you can use a reduce function instead. And so let me show you exactly what that looks like by simply saying a return and numbers dot reduce like that. A uh, reduce comes with a initial result, and then a next partial result function, which is a little bit confusing. Uh, you can use the initial value of zero, and then for the next partial, just use a brace brace like that, and then type in the value of, let's see, dollar sign zero plus dollar sign one like that. This should be okay. Let me just check if the logic works for us, and I'll just hit the pause and play like that, and we should get the value of 10. Let me pop in a value of five, and run this again. Sometimes the left bar breaks down, but uh, you can always hit this play button on the very bottom. And we have 15 on the right side. 
Now, if you're confused about what a reduce function does, I'll leave a link down below. So link down below for reduce function. Uh, but essentially, it starts off with the initial result of zero. And this guy right here is going to be zero at the very first iteration of the reduce call. And uh, we're going to get zero. And this is the next value. So we'll have one. So zero plus one is one. And then we take that sum and then we pop it back into zero and then we execute the next loop, giving us the dollar sign of one being two, so one plus two is three, and then so on and so forth, uh, giving us a return value of 15. And that's how you evaluate this reduce function. All right, so that's pretty awesome and hopefully a lot of you guys should be able to follow along so far. So hopefully everything up to this point wasn't too hard to follow. And I would like to move on to the next question that I would like to answer right below. So let's say, so let's say I want to also support sum of doubles, so sum of doubles and floats and CG floats and also unsigned integers and so on and so forth, right? So how would you exactly write out the function that supports doubles? Well, you can actually take this function over here and you can just copy and paste down below. Uh, let's remove some of these comments over here. And then for the numbers array, you can simply declare this as a double and then make this a double as well. And I think you might have to give this a different name. So let's say sum double. And down below, you can now finally call sum double. And inside of here, you can say one, two, and three. So this is actually going to work. If you run this code, you should get a value of six here. If you pop in some doubles of 1.0, 2.5, and maybe 3.5, 3.5, you should get the value of seven. So let me run that again, and we get a seven on the right side, proving that we can actually pop in doubles inside of this function. Now, if you move on to kind of supporting floats, CG floats, and uh, unsigned integers over here, then uh, that means you have to kind of duplicate all of these functions over and over again. And if you are a good programmer, that's something that you typically would like to avoid. And so the question is, how exactly do we avoid that problem? Well, we can actually use something called extensions on our array objects to kind of provide us with this summing functionality. So let me show you what that looks like by declaring an array extension right below here. So all you have to do is to say extension and use array like that. And then you want to make sure that you provide a function inside of your extension. So let's say function and sum like that and return some kind of type here. So I'm just going to use a T for now. And uh, this function, let's just use a return value of zero. Now you can't exactly run this right now. So hit the run and it says that we have an undeclared type of T. And so to declare an extension on doubles, ints, floats, and CG floats, you want to use this bit of syntax where the extension on your array is going to match a certain type. So the array is where the elements inside of it, so element, is going to conform to this numeric protocol. So let's just read it down here what exactly numeric means. Well, it declares methods backing binary arithmetic operators such as plus, minus, and multiplication. So that's kind of what this protocol does. If you highlight it here and look on the right side, you can see that uh, the numeric protocol provides a suitable basis for uh, arithmetic uh, scalar values such as integers and floating point numbers and so forth. So that's what this guy does. And once you declare an extension on elements that are conforming to this protocol, you can operate on things such as doubles, floats, and numbers, and so on and so forth. So what you can do inside of here is to also return this element type like so. So all you have to do inside of here is to provide your reduce function now. So return, and we'll say self.reduce, and we'll use the exact same code as we did before, dollar sign zero plus dollar sign of one. All right, so now that we've declared this function called sum, as an extension function, we can call this on any type of array of numeric objects. So in other words, I can say 1.0, 2.0, and you can now call sum like that. This is calling this sum function over here. Uh, to make it more explicit, maybe we can say custom sum. And then we should be able to get a value of three on the right side there. 
Let me just hit the stop and play again, and we'll get our custom sum to appear on the right side. Now, the power behind this custom sum function allows us to sum up any type of numeric array. So let's kind of go down here and declare an array of CG float types just for fun. So we'll say floats, and we'll set this guy equal to, let's see, let it be of type CG float like that, and let it be of 1.0, 2.5, and 4.5. And now you can see that floats right here also has the custom sum function just like that. You can run it using this play button down here and you'll see that we get the value of eight. All right. So that's the power behind uh, how we can extend our arrays to have custom uh, functionality like so. Now, the last thing that I would like to move on to is to show you how we can extend our arrays based on a certain type instead of a protocol such as numeric here. And so what exactly do I mean? Well, let's say we have some kind of array of string objects. So hello from, let's say, YouTube and then channel like that, right? Let's say I want to concatenate all these strings together so that I have this whole sentence of hello from YouTube channel as one single string, right? Well. We can actually do that by providing an extension on array as well. So array, and we'll say where element of our array is equal to a string type like that. So we are going to declare a function in here as well as so a function, and we're going to call this concatenate. And this is just going to join all of our strings together, providing a final string like that. All right, so I'm just going to simply return a blank empty string for now. And down below, you can cut this guy from above and say concatenate like that, providing us this function call over here. All right, so the question is, how exactly do we concatenate everything together? Well, this is pretty simple if you kind of realize that you can also use a reduce function. So self right here refers to our array. We can call reduce like that. And the initial result here is the empty string like that. And then we will use brace brace and we'll say dollar sign zero plus dollar sign one. That should give us what we want. We are now going to return this entire thing here. And this is going to run. Let's hit the stop. Hit the run. You'll get this as your result. So hello from YouTube channel. Uh, you'll see that it's one string without any spaces in between. What you can do is add a space at the end here, I believe, and that should give you what you are looking for. So let's hit this and hit the little inspector. Hello from a YouTube channel. Expand this out a little bit further. You'll see the rest of the string just like that. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Now, the main reason why you would prefer to use extension functions over just raw functions by themselves is because extensions are pretty much available everywhere inside of your project, making these functions very easy to reuse and also to fix if you ever have any bugs. And finally, if you're interested in more about Swift development, make sure to check out the latest course where I teach you exactly how to build out this menu system over here that allows us to swipe out the menu, revealing this menu controller all the way on the left panel. All right, if you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. If you want to download the source code for today's playground, you can find the link down below as well. That's going to be it for me today. Keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.